Good morning. It's another Friday, a somber Friday, but it's another edition of the Zeiger Report, real and unscripted, and appropriately subtitled uh, The United State of Democracy with a question mark. How are you doing, Jared? Uh, doing about as well as anyone can do right now. Yeah. And I think that's what we need to talk about. I've got a, a more fundamental issue and, and question. Um, and this is what I don't understand. We are both historians um, and American historians in, in particular. And, and I know that there is a Bill of Rights and I know that there is a Second Amendment and I know that it allows, even encourages individuals to have firearms in order to regular, have a well-regulated uh, militia. Uh, and what I don't understand is how the right to have a firearm has turned into a religion. Uh, and not just simply a religion, uh, for many, a religion that, that defines our humanity, uh, that defines our rights, defines our democracy, is inviolable, inalienable, that in fact, in many ways, it trumps every other right that we have. And that's what's perplexing. Uh, I am pro-gun control, to be very honest. I'm a, I'm a New Yorker, and I'm, I go back to the age of 19 when Martin Luther King and then Bobby Kennedy were assassinated, and the debate on guns began in earnest. And I've seen all of the ups and downs uh, the troubling movements, the peaks and valleys of, of shootings, now many school shootings. And I've never understood why um, limitations could not be made on the right to possess firearms. Um, I, I mean, if we use the NRA argument, and I will say, because I've polled and I've polled the NRA membership and I've polled the American people who favor background checks, who, who favor um, a ban on assault weapons, who, who favor the various kinds of limiting reforms. But I've never understood why they don't hold or why this sensibility that we have at this moment, the hurt that we feel for the, these parents and families and our kids, why it doesn't take hold and, uh, and, and last. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just terribly perplexed about this, but you, you have a lot of insight. How, is this a religion? I mean, is it, is it what defines my patriotism, whether or not you and I have a right to possess a firearm? Are we more than just that? Oh, most definitely, we're more than just that. And um, it is kind of like a religion, but, and I'm being objective here, there's a religion on both sides. And um, when religion, you know, religion to me is a good thing. And by the way, you know, you said we're American historians. I, I do classify myself as that, but I, I had a shift when um, I, sh I shifted towards world history and taught world history and in learning religion, religion is a good thing. It's an essential feature of civilization and religions have taught people empathy, but religion goes bad when it becomes a dogmatism. And that dogmatism doesn't just exist among the pro gun people. It, it exists among, I don't know if you want to call them the anti gun people. A lot of the problem is also the language here because not all people who would be classified or vilified as anti-gun necessarily want to entirely repeal the second amendment. So we're getting the extremes mm -hmm. um, on both sides. By the way, if I were Wayne LaPierre and after this shooting, which it was probably only, I don't know, two, three hours from Houston where they're convening their um, annual uh, uh, big gathering, I would say, in light of this tragedy and Memorial Weekend coming up, 
we're going to take a long weekend of silence mm -hmm. because we don't want to throw gasoline on the flame. That does not mean in any way that we're surrendering the right. But the, you know, so that that's a basic introduction. But you know what troubles me even more is the fact that this unbelievably gruesome homicide is reduced to a single issue of guns. Guns on the pro side and guns on the anti side. And what I mean by that is it goes so much deeper. It, it's, 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 to me, it's disgusting because then you see the political grandstanding on both sides. I mean, we saw Beto O'Rourke crash you know, a conference of uh, the local law enforcement, and it looked like a joke. I mean, it looked like something out of a worldwide wrestling federation staged event. Um, but on the other side, you're going to have the NRA convene their convention in typical fashion, as, as they, they always do, and gloat and carry guns. But here's the thing. In my view, and I don't hate guns and I don't love guns, I, 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 would, I would actually say that I'm, I'm probably more towards um, agnostic. But stepping away and looking at it holistically, let's imagine a scenario where Let's say, it, and I don't know this is the answer, but let's say Joe Biden wanted to repeal the Second Amendment or he wanted to put the, the most, you know, um, strict gun legislation the country has ever seen, maybe even wanted to do what Australia did and not confiscate guns from the citizens by force, but do it through financial reward and then make it illegal and, and very punishable to, to uh, disobey that law. Let's say we went down that road. Here's what people are not thinking about. As you and I are speaking right now, there are probably a dozen, two or three dozen people who are mentally ill, who are going on social media and making threats, who have sent all the signals to their teachers, to their friends, to their parents, and to law enforcement that they are gonna do something horrible. And even in the case that they don't have access to a gun, do we really think that the violence is going to stop? Because I've seen cases where mass stabbings, people run in town square and, and, and stab to death 10, 12, 15 people. I've seen cases where somebody gets into a car and runs little kids and parents over in a town square. So then do we barricade schools and town public. The point is, is that we're not getting at the root of the problem and we're not talking about the root of the problem. The root of the problem is severe mental illness. This country has an epidemic of mental illness. There are, are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who are on psychotropic drugs, which have side effects that give people suicidal and homicidal thoughts. And in almost every case, because I've been following this since Columbine, remember, I was in high school when Columbine happened, and it was deeply troubling for high school kids. Well, I've been there for, as, as a high school teacher as well, nearly every one of these shooters, it turns out, has been on a, a medication and has, has shown the signs of mental illness and we're not talking about how do we address that. There will be multitudes of, of horrific death machines that will not, and, and banning them will not stop murder and violence. What will stop murder and violence is healthy debate and getting to the root of the problem of this vast sickness in this country. All right, let me respond to some some things that you said. I, I, I you know, essentially I'm, I'm mainly in agreement with you. Uh, I'm in agreement that in very poor taste, uh, not only uh, will the NRA convention go on, but as you suggested, they will gloat and they will treat this as a moment where they not only have to go uh, on defense, but go on the offensive and restate uh, America's commitment uh, to, to guns. And that's very troubling. Uh, right there in and of itself. But, and, and the mental illness, Ill, illness issue, on one hand, <clears throat> is very important. We need to deal with mental illness um, in a much more comprehensive 
way, even above and beyond guns and, and school violence. Um, it is uh, an issue that is overwhelming uh, local issue, officials, uh, NGOs, simply not enough resources, um, et, et, et cetera. Um, but at the same time, I mean, fundamental question, does anybody really need an assault weapon? Does anybody really need to have two, three, five, an arsenal of assault weapons? These are designed not only to kill, but to pulverize people. Um, these are not for hunting. These make deer soup, um, as opposed to, you know, wounding, uh, 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 you, you know, uh, uh, an, an animal. Uh, can I really go to a gun show or a craft fair and buy a gun and not register <clears throat> at all? Can I really buy a weapon <clears throat> that is unmarked uh, and ammunition that cannot be traced to at least enable law enforcement to track me down in case my weapon is, uh, is used? In, in a horrific murder. I mean, this is basic fundamental stuff. I, I yield to the Second Amendment. I have learned over 25 plus years of polling on the Second Amendment. It's there. Even though I am strongly for gun control, uh, you know, I polled with Brad O'Leary of the NRA for, mm -hmm. for many, many years. I discovered the American people believe in the Second Amendment. It's particularly strong in the red states, and you're not going to take it away from people. Okay, that's a given. But meanwhile, um, at what point are we enabling not just the mentally ill, but those who are in a difficult situation, um, and instead of trying to diffuse and stabilize an unstable situation, folks have readily available to them the opportunity for not just uh, guns and ammunition, but horrific, horrific anti-personnel uh, death weaponry. Isn't there some common sense? We've done it before, and you know, the ban on, um, on, uh, on assault weapons worked. Uh, increased registration, uh, has worked. Uh, if you look at the chart, and you're the world historian, you've looked at the charts, and you see gun deaths in the United States and gun deaths everywhere else in the free world. There's no comparison. I know we're a big country, but so is Brazil, you know? Uh, uh, so are other places. Mm. Uh, we just stand out. We stand out on school shootings. Look, they've had horrific school shootings in, in the Netherlands and in Scotland and in New Zealand, yeah. uh, Tasmania. But ours are, are so frequent. Isn't it time that, well, look, 10 senators are sitting down. Mitch McConnell has, in, has empowered his number two, John Cornyn, of Texas to sit down with Kirsten Cinema, Chris Murphy, to discuss some meaningful movement forward. But I understand, even with those encouraging signs, assault weapons and background checks will not be part of, of this reform. But, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm baffled, troubled. Well, I've looked at all sides of this, and um, and and I remember a student who said to me nine years ago, he said, "Less guns equals less violence, right?" And and that was at a time when when I was trying to understand both sides of of the issue on many issues. Um, I mean, really um, taking a deep dive into understanding. What is far left? What is far right? What is left? What is right? What is centrist? What are the ideological roots of all these things? 
And, you know, the notion that less guns equals less violence is not true. Because in cases where you've seen this in other countries, people have turned to knives and stabbings have gone up. That happened in the UK. Um, you know, it, it, the same logic would mean, I, I mean, I, of course, I think most people, if, if we could actually achieve a world where people didn't do drugs and, and, and weren't violent, we would opt for that. The, the problem is that that's not the reality. Because the same logic applies to the drug, the, the war on drugs. The war on drugs was supposed to end drugs. It didn't end drug use. Drug use skyrocketed. And by the way, millions of people went in prison. Well, how can we think that less guns available is going to stop violence? It's not the gun that makes people violent. It's the violence within the people. And when you compare us to, I, no, but I have another thing. When you compare us to other nations, other nations don't have the mental crisis that we have. Show me a na show, show me a nation that that is addicted to opioids as much as we are. Show me a nation that has as many people on antidepressants as as and, and anti-anxiety and, and other drugs that that have the side effect of creating homicidal drive. I mean. That's what we're facing. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with, in most cases, these young adults and children who have been, who have been off on the wrong track mentally for years. And, and we seem to think by, that by limiting the guns that they're all of a sudden just not going to release that violent energy. Um, I think um, to a large degree, that's exactly what we are, are saying. Look, the opioid, opioid crisis is worldwide, certainly throughout the, uh, the, the developed uh, uh, world. But I, I honestly, I don't want to use the word cop-out. Mental health is a crisis and, and beyond, and we've already addressed that. But you cannot equate a knife or a car. Um, you, we've, we've seen folks... In, in uh, Nice, France, drive over people and kill, you know, uh, dozens of, of people. We, we've seen stabbings, you know, that have taken place. But an assault weapon is designed to do what it does. Uh, an assault weapon is just as dangerous in the hands of what Wap Wayne LaPierre would call a good person. Uh, as it is in the hands of a, a bad person. I don't understand. I, do I have a right then to uh, scare intruders by having an arsenal of cluster bombs? What about a tactical nuclear weapon? That's a firearm. Uh, I mean, these are designed to kill, not just kill, but as I said before, to pulverize people. They... Aside from law enforcement, there is no reason for an assault weapon. It's, your, hand. it's your assumption that they would magically disappear. You can ban them and, and mm. go ahead and ban them and make them illegal in every state. You think they're not going to slip through the border? Why, are, why aren't we securing the border? Why are drugs infecting rural, urban, small cities, suburban communities? It, it, yes, there are a lot of drugs that are in production here. You at least empower law enforcement by their not having to say that gun was purchased legally in another state or in Mexico, and there's nothing we can do about it in Texas. This way, there is something we can do about it in Texas. There is something we can do about it. You know, th this, this kind of, of thinking ignores the law of unintended consequences which not only conservative, not only progressives are, are well known for. I mean, it's also conservatives. It's just the notion that we can, we can, we can design society the way that, that, that a bunch of lawmakers get together and think that they can do without these consequences. The other thing is you talk about empower law enforcement. Another major issue, and it seems to be, and again, all the facts haven't settled out, 
in this case. But this case and in, in other school shootings, where was law enforcement? Where, well, where, where, where were, where were the feds, as I mentioned before, who have been tipped off? I've said that we have a surveillance state that most people, even myself, can't even comprehend. The, 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 the Edward Snowden's leaking of this program called PRISM, which mm -hmm. allows the NSA, and that's just one intelligence agency out of 16, to gather the communications of all Americans and stored at Bluffdale, Bluffdale, Utah, a gigantic data center with flags and, and sophisticated machine learning and algorithms to detect this threat and that threat. And remember, this was going on after 9-11, where we had, we had the Patriot Act, but those subsequent terrorist acts that almost happened were not stopped by DHS, were not stopped by the FBI, they were stopped by onlookers. And so what we're not thinking about is why does this keep happening? Why are law enforcement letting this slip through the cracks? That's another thing we have to talk about in terms of mental illness. Um, but also, how can we empower the onlookers? You know, oftentimes, here's another unintended consequence. If, if what you're saying is true, that less guns is, equals less violence, and, and making it more difficult to get guns would be successful, then why is Chicago one of the most violent cities in our country when it has one of the most strict gun control laws. So how do we yeah. work that out? Well, that's a, that obviously is a highly organized gang issue. And there are other problems there and in Washington, DC and, and in other, in other places. Um, uh, all right. We've talked about this. Uh, we've got a New York poll. Okay, and the most stunning finding, right, is in the GOP primary, which is exactly a month from tomorrow, uh, June 28th. And who do we have leading in hmm. that? The official GOP has endorsed uh, Congressman Lee Zeldin, <clears throat> but it doesn't seem to be catching on. Uh, there's a familiar name leading that pack. Who is that? I believe his name is Andrew Giuliani. Oh, he must be related to somebody. Yeah, I don't think he's the redheaded stepchild of, um, of Rudy, is he? <laughs> no, he's the he's the redheaded real child of of Rudy, and we have we've had him competitive right along, yeah. uh, but this time, if you factor in the leaners, at this point, uh, Andrew Giuliani, 35, 36 years old, is leading Congress in Lee Zeldin, 35 to 25. Um, that's not a good sign. What do you suppose is going on? I think the easiest and most obvious answer is, and I told a reporter this morning, look at the national context. Yeah. If we isolate ourselves to New York, even if you drive around here and you see signs for Rob Astorino and Lee Zeldin and people say, well, I just don't get it. I don't see Giuliani on TV, but Giuliani doesn't have to be on TV. Number one, because he's going to get Trump's endorsement. He was mm -hmm. an aide to the Trump White House. And number two, Zeldin and, and Wilson, who have the most TV ads, are, are bashing each other's brains out. He can just kind of stick back. But I mean, try take a drive through through New York State and not even just in the suburbs and, and in the rural. But you will see people with signs saying Trump 2024, Trump yeah. still won, Trump won 2020. MAGA exists in New York State. This is a blue state. But there is a mega following, and the national context tells us Virginia flipped red, J.D. Vance won the GOP primary in Ohio, and Dr. Oz may or may not win, but if you take Oz, the Trump chosen one, and Kathy Barnett, the carbon copy of Trump, you put them together and you have 55, 60% of that GOP primary vote in Pennsylvania. There is a mega wave in this country why isolate New York and, and pretend that we're immune to that? So let me just build on that because I agree. And I would add David McCormick in Pennsylvania to that MAGA following. Because, yeah. Sure. So it's even, it's even larger. But uh, when I look at the winners or purported winners, 
of the GOP primaries, Josh Mandel, uh, Oz or uh, McCormick. Uh, and what I see is them winning with 32 to 35 uh, percent against other GOP candidates, including other pro-Trump candidates. Uh, uh, w when I see uh, Andrew Giuliani running in a conservative field and getting 35%, what I'm seeing is the, the same thing that, that you are. That MAGA, that purest MAGA element is at least one third of the GOP, if not more. And so while others say, well, he's 35 years old, what's he ever done in his life? Why is he running for governor? His father is crazy. The bottom line here is that he's going to do well, no matter what. And I think our poll is capturing it. I don't know if he's going to win or not, but at least today, I'm confident that if that primary were today, um, okay. that he would win it substantially. Yeah, I mean, to say, what has he done? I mean, I wanted to agree with that, but just look at our country. I mean, we've elected um, two movie stars, one for president, that was Reagan, one for governor, that was Schwarzenegger, a WW Worldwide Wrestling Federation star, that was uh, Jesse um, Ventura in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Of course, we elected a, a TV personality for president, I mean, d does your political office resume really matter or is it more about the appeal, the brand and the expectation of what people want you to bring? I think that's where we get Andrew Giuliani. This, uh, we've definitely moved rapidly into the phase where celebrity and political leadership um, have blended. And now with social media, and the capacity to even bypass lots of money to run TV commercials. You know, all you need are millions of your own followers, which some people uh, can do uh, and, 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 and do without spending an enormous amounts of money. We're there. Uh, and it remains to be seen whether it's a good thing uh, or not. But... We've had a lot to say today. You know, we want you folks out there that are listening, uh, reading or watching, let us know what you think. Uh, you know, please um, uh, click on a reply, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook or uh, YouTube or our email database. Let us know what you think about some of the things we're saying. Uh, let us know what you think about, uh, we see that a lot of you are coming back uh, every week. Uh, tell us if you like it, tell us you like it. If there's something that troubles you, we need to hear that as well. But thanks again for listening. Thanks for a good conversation. Yeah, I love you. I love you and too. I and let me, let me just add that, I mean, we don't say this enough. Every other video says, please share. I mean, we're, we're, we're asking you, please share. Um, show your family and friends that it is possible to take contentious issues that in unfortunately in most cases people yell and fight and scream over and stop their friendship and even in worst cases um and their relations between family show them how we don't do that this is the way this is how you can talk things through please share uh and subscribe okay another good one thanks take care see you next week have a great Memorial Weekend.